The Hell Creek Formation, 66 million years ago. A place where you will find some of the most famous of all dinosaurs. From the herbivorous Triceratops and Ankylosaurus, to the mighty Tyrannosaurus Rex. But in the deepest parts of the darkest forest, lives a seldom seen dinosaur. A phantom that strikes in the dim light, and rarely makes a sound. One could live their entire life in this forest, and never encounter a Dakota Raptor, the ghost of the forest. This 5.5 meter predator is amongst the largest of dromaeosaurs, but he's not a heavyweight. He is a sprinter, built to run down prey quickly and pin them down with a large sickle claw on each foot. What is most unnerving about Dakota Raptor, however, is how it moves in complete silence. Its stealth skills are unmatched. Despite its size, it can blend seamlessly amongst the forest, often able to strike at prey without them ever realizing they were being hunted. This male is eyeing a flock of ornithomimosaurs, who have ventured too deep into the forest. They have excellent vision and are also always on alert, but not a single member of the flock has managed to see the approaching predator. His steady advance has been near perfect, and now he is at the optimal distance to strike. He breaks into a sprint, getting up to high speed before the ornithomimosaurs even detect him. When they do, a few give out a warning call, causing the flock to run, but the predator is now meters away. The Dakota Raptor leaps forward, arms and legs tucked in, ready to strike. The ornithomimosaur ducks unexpectedly, bending its knees and pulling its long neck closer to its body. The Dakota Raptor is mid-air and set to pass right over the ostrich-like dinosaur, but he wasn't outdone yet. The predator leaned one leg out, and as he passed over his prey, he kicked backwards. The long sickle claw on his second toe slashed right through the ornithomimosaur's neck, severing multiple vital organs. The attack was so quick and so sudden, the victim didn't even know why he was suddenly struggling to breathe, till the blood flowed down his neck and chest. The Dakota Raptor lands on his feet and spins to pursue his injured prey, breaking back into a sprint, but the ornithomimosaur is already starting to fall. The predator leaps onto its back, pinning it under his weight, and driving his large foot claws into its flesh. As the prey struggles, he holds out his feathered arms to balance himself, and then bites down on the victim's torn neck to kill it quicker and to silence it faster. The ornithomimosaur doesn't go down gently, but eventually succumbs to its wounds. The Dakota Raptor considers himself lucky. His mid-air kick was not something he had planned, but more of a last-second reaction that fortunately paid off. The claws on his feet are large even for dromaeosaurs, but are more built for pinning down prey and not mid-air slashing. Though in this case, all that extra momentum may have helped split open the animal's throat. Now that all is silent, he can feed. Although keeping the blood out of his feathers is difficult, he can always wash them later. He isn't left alone to eat, however. Ten minutes after making the kill, he hears different predators approaching. Drawn by the noise of the hunt and the smell of blood are two juvenile Tyrannosaurus rexes. At six meters long, they are far from the monster adults that they could grow to be. In fact, young Tyrannosaurs have a much leaner build to catch small, fast prey. As they grow, however, they will transform to be able to tackle massive herbivores. Small though they are, the two of them could easily bully the Dakota Raptor off his kill, but they have never seen his like before. In fact, they are more used to running from members of their own kind. The Dakota Raptor stands in front of the carcass and eyes the two intruders. Right now, the best option would be to retreat, but he has one other method. He lowers his head towards the ground while raising his tail upwards. He then pushes his elbows out and ruffles all the feathers on his body. Every feather expands, making him suddenly appear much larger. As he does this, he lets out a rarely heard screech that pierces the ears of the two tyrannosaurs. The threat display works instantly, and both of the juveniles turn tail and run back the way they came. The Dakota Raptor lets his feathers fall back into place and flexes his neck. 
It is rare he ever makes a sound, let alone scream as loud as he possibly can. Hopefully that would keep other carnivores away. For now he could eat in peace, and then return to the depths of the forest, disappearing like a phantom. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the elusive and rare Dakota Raptor. Dakota Raptor was a large dromaeosaur that lived 66 million years ago in the US state of Montana. Originally discovered in 2005 in the famous Hell Creek Formation, Dakota was not properly named till 2015. Interestingly, it is the only medium-sized carnivore ever discovered in that area, which we will get to later. Dakota Raptor measured between 5 to 6 meters long, stood 2 meters tall, and weighed between 220 and 350 kilograms. This would make it the second largest dromaeosaur ever discovered, just beating out a kilobeta, but not quite as large as Utah Raptor. However, Dakota Raptor is not as heavily built as these two. Its body is more like its smaller lightweight cousins, indicating that it was a fast sprinter and not a predator that would outmuscle its prey. Not only are the bones light and filled with air sacs, but the tibia is 22% longer than the thigh bone. This means that it is excellent for running. The famous sickle claw on the second toe was quite large, measuring 24 centimeters along the outer curve, and at 29% the length of the thigh bone, makes it proportionally quite large compared to other members of its family. The flexor tubercle that attached the claw to the toe is larger relative to overall claw size than it is in other discovered dromaeosaurs, potentially giving it the strongest slashing strength of any known member of the group. It is important to note that the main use of these large foot claws was to pin down prey like modern birds of prey do, and not as a slashing weapon as they are sometimes depicted as. However, the size of the claws and the muscles do open up the possibility that Dakota Raptor may have adapted to use its sickle claws in such a way. Unfortunately, we will likely never know. The forearms of Dakota Raptor had many tiny bumps along them, which were revealed to be quill knobs. These are reinforced attachments for large feathers. This not only confirms that Dakota Raptor had feathers, but is the only evidence for feathers on large dromaeosaurs. Given the size of the quill knobs, the feathers must have been quite large, and though Dakota Raptor could not fly, it does mean that its arms can be referred to as wings, much like how modern emus and ostriches have wings. The use of these feathers were likely for insulation, display to mates, threat displays, covering eggs while nesting, or keeping balance while pinning down prey with its feet. Now, as mentioned before, Dakota Raptor is the only medium-sized predator found in the Hell Creek Formation. For those who don't know, this formation contains many of the most well-preserved fossils of some of the most famous dinosaurs, such as Tyrannosaurus rex, Triceratops, Ankylosaurus, and Edmontosaurus. Despite the fact that this site has been studied for over a century, Dakota Raptor was only discovered recently, and with limited remains. This has led to it being called the Ghost of the Forest, as it may have been a rare sight, and not to mention an awesome nickname. Being the only found medium predator has led to an interesting theory that Dakota Raptor would compete with juvenile Tyrannosauruses for food, as the adults would target large herbivores, and the adolescents, upon reaching a similar size to Dakota Raptor, would hunt similar prey. Dakota Raptor seems to be the cheater of its region, and it's not known if it hunted in packs. Overall, it's a very interesting creature, a large but lightly built dromaeosaur covered in feathers, and yet heavily armed. Yet with a lack of fossils, it seems so rare and mysterious, living in the shadows of the Cretaceous giants, hunting by the moonlight. A figure that few ever saw, and even fewer lived to tell the tale. It also would have been around to witness the end of the Age of Dinosaurs, being amongst the last of the Dromaeosaurids. But what do you think of Dakota Raptor? Do you think it stuck to the darkest parts of the forest? Or that it hunted in open fields, making use of its full speed? What lesser-known dinosaur would you like me to cover in a future episode? And until then, thank you for watching.